How do you spell cheap? C H E A P. That's the inexpensive. Yeah, cheap. Yeah. <laughs> always a, always a problem. <laughs> Make sure I know what I'm spelling. I'm Piper Bloomquist, and I'm a contemporary folk artist, painting in the traditions of Swedish doll mulling and bonads mulling. Doll mulling and bonads mulling are folk arts, and they refer to the hand-painted wall hangings that decorated the inside of Swedish farmhouses in the 18th and 19th centuries. Those paintings were kind of like painted wallpaper, and they were storytelling, often telling stories that were biblical or allegorical, or sometimes containing scenes from the daily life of the Swedish peasant class. Hi, I'm Piper Bloomquist, and I live in Grand Forks, North Dakota, and I'm a Swedish folk artist. This is a type of painting that was done in the province of Dalarna, Sweden, and it's called dolmalning. A couple of typical elements of dolmalning are multiple borders, as you can see, lots and lots of borders. We've got typically drapery across the top and some sort of ribbon border across the bottom and always the presence of this very large telescoping bloom of flowers and that's called a curvet's flower. I've been doing this for almost 20, 25 years now and most of my paintings early on I was using acrylics on canvas that was easiest for me but in the last several years I've moved into using some traditional materials which we'll talk about in a little bit. This is the room where I like to keep all of my painted things because I don't really want them all over my house. I do get um, a little overwhelmed with them sometimes. So I learned how to paint with um, some Norwegian rose maulers at first, but quickly into my second class of rose mauling, I uh, learned about the Swedish folk art, but I still do um, enjoy working with some Telemark styles and some Oost styles and a little bit of Hollingdahl as well. This is a cupboard that I did at one point. This is a Swedish style cupboard and this is done in oils on wood and it is inspired by the Swedish painted cupboards in the province of Jampland. Beautiful elegant cupboards but those those cupboards in Sweden were painted by guild painters and um, quite skilled. They were trained in Stockholm. I was not trained in Stockholm <laughs> um, but uh, anyway I think my cupboard turned out pretty well. This is, there's a style in Sweden that is from the southwestern border of Småland and Holland, um, that the border between those two, a little bit of northern Skåne and northern Blekinge, and that's called Bonads Malning. Um, this is almost a reproduction of one of the old Bonads Malning pieces, but um, what I have done was created my own gesso substrate. This one I believe is um, an egg yolk and flour and chalk recipe that I mixed up and I just put it on um, a burlap jute. And when I did this I had to use a couple of layers of jute um, because it was so loosely woven to start with and I put a couple of layers of gesso on and then the painting was done with powdered pigment and egg yolk which was traditional of that particular type of painting. And then I just stitched it onto this raw linen. But as you can see, this is the story of the three wise men um, on their journey to the nativity. And one of the things the old Swedish painters did was they dressed their characters, Bible characters, all in the current clothing of the time. And so you have um, the Magi here dressed as um, 19th century Swedish kings and Swedish soldiers. I use the common motifs and decorative elements found in doll mulling and bonads mulling, along with the traditional materials of linen, homemade gesso, which is made of either eggs and flour and chalk or sometimes animal glue, and paints made of egg tempera. And I create painted tapestries with scenes that narrate modern human stories, stories of mine and stories of others. I draw inspiration from my family traditions, my experience as an oncology nurse working with life and death, and with rural life in the upper Midwest, as well as some current events such as the recent COVID-19 pandemic. This is a piece that I did um, last year when the COVID quarantine started. This is a doll mulling um, that I started actually with the script. I found 
there was a, an isolation checklist that was circulating on Facebook with a long list of things to make sure that people were um, keeping themselves healthy during quarantine. And so I took the words, you know, sometimes it just starts off with words, not even a picture story, but just a series of words that can give inspiration to an idea. And this is the isolation checklist, well-being, shower, medication, drink water, clean one thing or space, tend to something growing or living, be mindfully present to a sound, a sensory feeling, something you see, a spiritual practice, reach out to a human outside of your home, do one thing to get your heart rate up, like ride this bike, um, do one thing that later you'll be glad you did. Do one thing just because you want to. Get in at least one good laugh. I have been really enjoying painting the stories that other people give me. Um, one of the things that I'm active in in the state of North Dakota is something called the Art for Life program, and that's artist in residence in elder care facilities. And I'm um, currently in the process of working on a big piece with a facility in Enderlin, North Dakota right now. And I'm gonna go through my process a little bit with you. In November, I did several Zoom interviews with residents because of the COVID um, quarantine. We weren't able to meet in person. And I just spent about 20 to 30 minutes stuck talking to each one about anything, about life, about things they loved as a kid, things that they remembered that was great, things that they remembered that wasn't. Um, and then I gathered up all of my notes as I have stacks and stacks of notes and went through them all and picked common themes. And there were several repeated themes that came up. Um, people talked about how they got to school. Some person, somebody rode a, rode a horse, somebody else, the car broke down and someone came by in the sleigh and picked him up in the sleigh. And um, so there were two people that talked about crawling up into the apple trees and sitting there as kids in the summer when the cousins came and um, just ate apple trees in the summertime. And so I picked those out and um, decided to sketch out that story. But I, I also had to come up with a plan in my head, did I wanna do this in a doll molding or a Bonads molding style? And so I did go through all of my books. I thought Bonads molding worked well because you could tell many stories all on the same piece. Um, and that's, that's a feature of that particular type of painting. So I go through my books and come up with a color scheme, do I want it to be really compact and busy? I decided that wasn't the case because if we're dealing with an older population, um, I wanted them to be able to see the painting and have not have it be so crowded. So I went with a little bit looser, um, a little looser motif. Once I get that, I kind of have copies of it in front of me to remind me of, remind myself of where I'm gonna go with this painting once I get started. And I spend an awful lot of time sketching. And as I'm sketching, I end up uh, sketching a lot on little tiny pieces of paper and um, measuring out how big I want the piece. And then as I sketch on tiny little pieces of paper, I can move them around and put them where I want and sort of organize my painting that way. Once I'm done laying out my storyboard, then I do need to make a final um, sketch or a final pattern, I guess is what I would call it. And I use transfer paper and I put on top of that. And then I go through and, and do the, what is going to be the final um, defined lines that will get transferred onto my canvas. Once I have a sketch, and then I've also made the canvas and put the gesso on it, we're ready to transfer it on. Now I've already done that on this piece, but just to show, this is how that went. Uh, the sketch ended up being transferred on here. What I used to transfer is, you know, I tape that up there, and I have these pieces of um, paper that is basically powdered pigment and water just painted on there and that creates a little transfer paper. I can just use that and it will transfer the pattern on. Once I get that done, I do all of the outline and I paint all of the faces and I paint 
some of the items that I think are going to need to be a certain way. I did all of this, um, the wording. And these are stories that nursing home residents told me. And then what happens then is I bring this to one of the elder care facilities, the same facility um, where the people were that I interviewed, and I guide them in a painting day. And so they, the residents themselves, were able to paint in um, the bulk of all of these color blocks that you see. And once painting day is over, it comes back to me. I can um, fix up a little bit of the areas where people were getting pretty tired and having a harder time, you know, controlling their brush. I can fix that up, but then the um, final product is going to me, be me doing all of the detailing and all of the embellishments, and then it will go back to the elder care facility and it'll hang there and they get to enjoy it. But they had a great time. I, they had a great time when we sat down to paint this. There were residents that came into that activity room and they recognized their own stories right away. And this is a great community project, um, very fulfilling for me and for them. I just love telling their stories. So I've only actually been able to travel to Sweden twice and it's been fairly recently. So I've been doing all of this studying and all of this work for 20 years out of books. In 2018, I got to go again for a month through a fellowship that was granted to me and my student through the American Scandinavian Foundation. And that month was fantastic. I got to um, meet with art historians and museum curators that gave me access to the storage facilities uh, at some of the museums. They were pull, they were able to pull some um, of the older pieces out for me. We got to take a look at them up close. Um, some of them that were a little bit different than the other ones for one reason or another. And I learned so much on that trip um, that it's just it changed the way I view the social and economic. Um, implications of this particular art form at the time that it was being made and that's just added so much richness to what I do. Right now I am working on a series that I'm calling the Cathedral Series. Um, I'm taking a look at Romanesque sculpture from various cathedrals in Europe, some in France, but now I'm starting to look a little bit more closely at the ones in Sweden. Um, and taking some of the sculpture that I see either on the capitals above pillars or over doorways and I'm translating those sculptures into my version of a painted bonad. And I have a couple of them here. This is the Dream of the Maji. And this, I believe, is based on a sculpture that is in a cathedral in France. And I've done a couple versions of this keeping track, of course, all the time of what it is that I've used so I don't forget. So it's the colors that I used and what I used in the substrate and adoration of the Maji. Right now, these are Christian themed, but not all of my paintings are going to be that way. It just so happens that this is what, I think I had Christmas in my mind. <laughs> One of the fun things I, think about having a home studio is the fact that I do not have to leave my house to go to it, um, which is especially nice in the winter when it's cold weather and, um, and it's just right here and part of that coziness of being inside in the winter. Mm -hmm.